Hey everybody, Wayne here. Um, this is a second video I'm doing for um, the game Wars of Marcus Aurelius, solitaire game, um, just published by Holland's Field recently, as of this video, designed by Robert Dolesky. This is the second video. Normally I wouldn't do uh, multiple um, gameplay videos, especially with, like the same game, unless it was different turns. But my first video only went two turns, and my camera messed up, so I'm going to try to get through a whole game here for you guys. I want you to be able to see it um, from setup all the way till the end of the game. Win or lose, probably going to be lose, but uh, we're going to give it a shot here. Okay, so everything's all set up. Um, everything's set up and ready to go, so we're just going to dive right in here. Alright, so on the first turn, you skip the deployment step. So you, go to the, you start with the spring round on the year 170, first year. You skip the barbarian phase of the first turn, so it goes right into the Roman phase, which I get to draw five cards. There's some good ones here. Okay. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna discard this action card. We're gonna battle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna battle the Marco Mani. I'm gonna send Marcus Aurelius and his six legions up to fight the Marco Mani. Now, I already explained this a little bit in my other video, but I'll explain everything now um, as though you haven't seen the other one. So sorry if you've watched it and you really know how the game works here. Um, well, you can have up to six legions, and when you do when you fight is you compare battle values and then also uh, roll 1d6 for each side. So battle value is determined by how many legions, so in this case six, plus your leader rating, which Marcus Aurelius on his bold side is a three. So that's six plus three, nine plus the 1d6, um, and the other modifiers, which I have no cards or anything to modify right now. So 9 plus my 1d6, and then what you do for the Barbarians is their leader rating, which right now he's on his bold side, so he's 4, and then you compare against the terrain value as well, so it's plus 2, so 4 plus 2 is 6. So my 9 versus his 6, and like I said, 1d6 each. Alright, so here's what happened now. Not good. I won, but not good overall. So. Go ahead and four and a one. And green is barbarian, red is me. So I got, let's see, it was nine plus one. Actually, so I didn't win anyway. Sorry, nine, yeah, ten. Um, and then they got four, five, six, plus four, ten. So tied, which a battle can be a tie, so you re roll. Um, what happens though is when, if you roll a one and Marcus Aurelius is your army leader in that battle, you, I believe, let me check, I have a little cheat sheet here. Uh, roll a one, decrease IP by one. Yep, it's the Imperium track, which just keeps track of kind of my um, power back in Rome. It starts at a four, goes from one to seven. If it gets to zero, you're usurped, you're assassinated. It started at a four, so now it's down to three, so roll a one. But since we tied, you can't have a tie at the end. The battle can't be a draw, so you have to re-roll automatically. All right, two and two, so I win now. So they get pushed back up to the plus four spot. Let's see here. I think, yeah, I'm gonna call the battle there. I don't wanna keep fighting, because now there would be, so I still have my nine, but then they would be four plus four, so they'd be eight now. Um, so it'd be that much harder to actually beat them in a roll. I like to have a, a good lead when I roll the attack, so, all right. I think what we'll do is check something here. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to discard this action card. I want to build two forts. I'm going to build two level one forts. I'm going to build first one here at the plus two, another one at the, the plus four um, on the Marco Mani track here. Oh, I should have used the route, huh? Maybe. Okay, that's okay. I had some different cards, but that's all right. You know what? We're going to go ahead. We're going to hang out of these three cards. 
Um, at the end of a phase, at the end of at least the spring and summer phase, you would discard down to five, which I only have three, so we're good there. So go ahead and go on to the summer round, which now barbarians get to start their phase, they go first. You start drawing cards, barbarians draw three cards each phase. And that's for all three phases, spring, summer, winter. Versus the Romans, cards go down. It's five in the spring, three in the summer, only one in the winter. All right, so first barbarian card, quad eye. Advance quad eye forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. Add this card to the search pile. So what's interesting with the quad eye is that you start off with a quad eye can attack counter. Um, but what you do is as soon as they activate, you actually discard that counter. And you go ahead and you move them. Oh, should have on this bold side. Um, you go ahead and move them down anyway. So really what that is is that you can't attack them in their home spot, because if you attack a barbarian army in its home spot and you defeat it, then the tribe becomes surrendered. So I guess they want to prevent you from doing that right away. Alright, so, he activated, goes to the search pile, that's card number one, so barbarian card number two, another quad eye, that's where I shuffled these. Advance quad eye forward one space, I go on plus four, and add it to the search pile, oh boy. Now card number three, legions demand donation, oh no. Place a mutiny marker on any army led by Marcus Aurelius. This one's, this one's rough. All right, so mutiny marker here, played down on my army. Cannot be activated. The army cannot be activated until you discard one card from a hand or meditation spot and deduct one IP. Mutinous troops do not come towards pacification value. We're rolling for Oathbreaker. Do not remove this marker during the housekeeping stage unless it's been resolved as described above. Wow. Okay, so. Discard one card and deduct one IP. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and have to do that later. Um, but, so that was the third card, and this one does not go to the Surge, you notice. So the Surge stays, which is two cards. Um, when Surge gets, you get three cards are in the Surge pile. So say there's a third one that activated the Marco Mani. Well then, you'd actually then, because there's a Surge, it activate the other two that weren't activated. So say the Marco Mani were activated by a third card, the quad eye and easy guys, I call them easy guys, uh, I'm sure there's another way to pronounce it, they would activate as well. So you gotta be careful when you get to the surges because you're gonna have all kinds of barbarians marching down at once. You can technically discard a card, one of your Roman cards, to um, take one of their cards, instead of putting it in the surge pile, putting it in the discard pile, but obviously that gets expensive because you have a finite amount of cards that you have to use and you wanna use them for your own strategies as well. All right, so that was the end of the turn or excuse me, the end of their phase, the Barbarian phase, they stay, these two cards stay in the Surge piles here. So, all right, so now it's my turn. Um, in the Summer phase here, the Romans draw three cards. And I already still have my three from before. So, one, two, three more. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and discard Philosophical Inquiry as part of the Mutiny, try to resolve that Mutiny, along with I reduce my IP by one, so now it's down to two, and I remove that Mutiny marker. So now I can use Marcus Aurelius' army again. Speaking of which, I'm gonna go ahead and, let's see, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to discard Seize the Initiative um, and just use it as an action, which my action will be Battle. And I'm going to battle on the Marco Mani track. And battle with Marcus Aurelius and his legions. So, same thing as before. It was six. I have six legions. Plus Marcus Aurelius is three, so that's nine. But I'm also fighting them, and, which, and they have four plus four, because they're in that track, or that space, excuse me, would be eight. But I also have a level one fort there, so that gives me plus one attack. So I'm actually at a... Uh, plus 10 on my roll, they're at plus 8, so I get a slight advantage. Let's see what we can do here. Alright, awesome. So, this is great news here for me. So, I rolled 6 and 2. 6 for me, 2 for them. So, obviously, I won the battle. Uh, but also, because I rolled a 6 while being with an army led by Marcus Aurelius, just like with a 1 where you deducted uh, 1 from the Imperium track, I rolled a 6, I get to add 1. So, I went from a 2 up to a 3, which is good because the Imperium track was getting a little low there. And, so I push them back to the one spot, so plus six here, but 
I'm also going to play the route card, back, battle after Roman victory, move a defeated army back two spaces instead of one towards their home space, and flip them to demoralize. So now they're going back, they're at their home spot, and they're demoralized. So now they're only at a two, and then their home spot would be a plus eight terrain value if I fought them. Which, let me tell you right now, I am going to fight them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard four entreaty as an act to play an action. My action is going to be battle. I'm going to move my guys up here. I like to, but you don't have to move them. I mean, they can stay down at their spot, but I just like to have them close to the fight. So, All right, so it's six plus three, nine. And then they'd be them as two plus eight, ten. So it's, you know, they got the advantage here. They got the advantage. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to play this, depending on what I roll. I'm about to play a tactical advantage card. We'll see. Okay, let's see what happens here. Let's do our, let's do our roll. So plus ten for them, plus nine for me. Let's see what happens. All right, well, here's, so here we go. So I rolled a one. They rolled a four. So I would have 10, and they would have what? What would that be? 14, so they'd win, right? But I'm going to play Tactical Advantage. Battle after, you play it in the battle after a die roll. Flip the Roman or Barbarian die after rolling to its opposite side. You may use this on a 1 or a 6. And then the 1 or a 6 um, counts for the morale slash uh, Imperium track increase and vice versa. So normally, first of all, we'd suffer IP loss, Imperium track loss. Because we're rolling a one with Marcus Aurelius, and we're gonna lose his battle, which then we'd have a legion be put in the recovery box. You know, he's hurt from the battle. Well, tackle advantage, I get to flip a die to its opposite side. So this one I rolled is now a six. So now it's nine plus six, 15, and their 10 plus four, 14. I win. I win by one, but that's a win. Plus, I got a six, so now my Imperium track goes up from a three to a four. So that's awesome. So, here's what happened. I defeated them. Get my legion, victorious legions out of the way here. I defeated the Marco Manai in their home space. What you do then is they become surrender. They're surrender tribe. So you move their counter down to the surrender tribe box and place it in there. Now I want to keep them pacified. And we'll explain that as we go. But, basically now they are um, surrendered to me. So, they're not going to activate normally unless they do break their oath, they make an oath breaker check and are able to activate and come back on the board. But for now, they're surrendered to me. Great news. All right. All right, well, I'm going to hang on to this current last card I have here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, end uh, the summer phase. Summer round, excuse me, my phase. So we'll go on to the winter round. So they so you start off the barbarian phase again. So you start drawing their cards. Bad omens. Okay. Roll to determine which barbarian army flips the demoralized side. I'll roll mine. Against bad against them. One. Marco Manai. Well, he's already surrendered, so I guess no effect. That's too bad. Second card here. Okay, this would be the quad I would activate. However, I'm going to play um, this Electisturium. Cancel the effect of the current barbarian card, except off map conflict, which this is not an off map off map conflict. Do not draw any more barbarian cards this round. So. That doesn't take effect, and you don't draw any more. No. Alright. So, on to uh, my winter winter phase for the Romans. So in the winter phase, Romans only get to draw one card. Okay. Auction in the form of the deified Trajan. Ooh. IP plus two. Or draw two new cards. Um... I'm going to do IP plus two, so I'm going to play this for uh, its event. So I'm going to increase, increase the Imperium track from four to six. Oh, if only I got to seven. That's too bad. That's right, though. Right, go ahead. So that was all I have anyway. We're going to go ahead and move on to the housekeeping round. All right, so housekeeping. First, you check attrition. For every four on the map, roll a 1d6. On a roll of six, it reduces it by one. Which they're both, my only two forts are both level one, so if Ebram got um, attrition roll on them, they would be reduced, they would be eliminated. So the top one first, two, so it stays. Number six eliminates, three, okay, good. Forts out of supply. You always have to play, trace a uh, path of supply from the Danube to your forts. 
um, what that means on the same tracks. What that means is say there's these two forts in the Marco Mani track. The Danube is right there, so it's two forts north of it. It has to be there has to be a fort, a fort, a fort, a fort. It couldn't be a fort up here, no fort, and then a fort. Um, if that happened, when it came down to this part, the checking for supply, you'd eliminate the more northern or eastern northern um, fort that did not have a path of supply. So we're good there. Remove temporary truce marker, none of those. Foot marks are always for demoralized to bold. He was already was bold because he's been kicking butt. No off map conflicts. Um, no Marco Man at Workwadi south of the Danube. Danube. Advance the year marker by one. Place round marker on round one spring. So, year is now 171, and the round is the spring round. So, here's a redeployment step, uh, which we skipped the first turn. And now second turn we get to do it. This allows us to move our leaders and legions around uh, between the different tracks, different conflict areas, either off-map conflicts or on-map. No off-map conflicts to worry about right now. Also get my two legions. Um, you started off, you started the game off with two legions in the recovery box um, that the, to signify the historical of them being eliminated or uh, in combat uh, before the game started, before 170 C. So, let's see here what we got. Well, I definitely don't need Marks Aurelius with six legions in the Marco Mani since they're currently surrendered. Although I do need, need to lead some guys there to keep them pacified. And again, I'll explain that later. So we're going to move Pompeius over there along with, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, we'll do these four with him for now. And then we're going to do Marks Aurelius. We're going to move him to the Quad Eye along with his six, and I have his two more now. Shoot, I need another leader soon here. Okay, well, for now, we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, we'll put one more with Pompey, and then we'll go ahead and just put one guy over here on his own over with the easy guys. <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't have to fight at all. All right, so we'll see what happens here. All right, so let's go ahead and start um, the spring round here. Barbarian face first. So let's begin with their three cards. Plague. Oh no. Lose one IP. It's Imperium. It's down to five. Roll one D6. Two. If you roll a one, place two legions of your choice in the recovery box. And any other roll, which was that, a two. Place one legion for any army in the recovery box. Oh great. Okay, so let's go ahead and move. This guy that was on his own with the easy guys. Let's go ahead and move him to the recovery box. All right, second barbarian card, Alexander of Abatatujishis. Oh, Marcus, lose one IP. Oh man, I was getting up there too. All right, and the third and final, easy guys. Advance easy guys forward one space or flip them demoralized to bold. Add this card to the surge. So here, this is an example. We're gonna explain a couple things here. So, first of all, easy guys moves from down up here. Down here, so he's getting closer to me. Also, add this card to the surge. Okay, that's three cards. That's now creates a surge. What that is, it activates. Because the easy guy activated. This activates the quad eye and the Marco man eye. So, quad eye, well, they advance because they got activated. Now, the Marco man eye, you say, well, how can they activate? They're surrendered. Ah, Oathbreaker check. So, anytime they would be activated, even though they're surrendered, you make an Oathbreaker check. What you do is, you can. You roll 1d6 for them, you compare it to the pacification value of that track. Pacification value is determined by the strength of any armies there, which we have five, five legions there. Leader rating, one, Palpanus is one. And then the any level two forts, so I don't know if you can see this at all, but a regular level one fort is plus one attack, plus zero pacify. A level two fort would be plus two attack, plus one pacify. So, at the moment, we have the five legions and his one, that's six. They do have to roll greater than on a 1d6. So they can't beat it. So right now, because I have six uh, pacification value on the Marco Mani track, there's no reason to even roll, because even if they get a six, they can't beat it. The danger to you is, you know, you have to, well, you're balancing your resources. You keep enough troops and keep enough resources to keep them suppressed, or excuse me, keep them uh, surrendered. Or you give a chance that they can beat you on a roll, and then they'll come right back in the game, they'll start up their home spot, and it's, it's back back in action. So for now, like I said, I don't need to roll. 
but in the future if I reduce the amount of armies there or something like that, then they may be able to oath, you know, be an oath breaker and, and get back in the fight. So, alright, that was the third. Yep, it was. That was the surge as well. Alright, so the barbarian phase of the summer round is over. So now, or excuse me, spring round. So now mine, I get to draw five cards. Discard the effects of to prevent the effects of plague. Oh, I could use that one. Alright, All right, we're gonna play temporary truce. Place a truce marker on one army, barbarian arm that is north of the Danube. The army doesn't move for the rest of the year and you cannot attack it. Its cards are still added to the search pile. So we're going to do the truce on the easy guys here. So I'm going to kind of pin them in place. All right. Now we're also going to play War Atrocities. Roll a 1d6 and roll a 2d6. One Barbarian Army of your choice is demoralized. If you roll a 1, flip all Barbarian Armies to their bold side. So let's hope I roll 2d6. 4. All right, perfect. So I'm going to flip the Quad Eye to their demoralized side. Oh, this is a good one here. So I'm going to play Markomania. Mark so Markomania and Quad Eye fronts only, which I'm going to use on the Quad Eye front here. Place two level two forts in any eligible space. That's awesome. That's a really good card. Alright. So I'm going to put one here and put one here. Yeah, you can put down forts even if there's a barbarian army there or if they're past it or anything like that. So. Alright, I'm going to uh, discard Galen here to just discard that card to play an action. My action is going to battle. I'm going to battle the Quad Eye here with Marcus Aurelius and his six legions. So, it's my six plus Marcus and his three. That's nine. Plus, I have a plus two for a level two fort. So, eleven. So, plus eleven for me. They're at three plus two for the terrain value there. So, plus five. So, I'm at plus eleven there, plus five. Oh, man. All right, so one and one. So I win. And there's, so the two special effects for the one, though. So I did win. But, as, as we know, I rolled a one, so I reduced my IP by one because I'm led by Marcus Aurelius. Bad news, I guess. The battle didn't, just didn't... I won, but it wasn't a good battle. I don't know. They rolled a one, which, when a barbarians roll a one, they're flipped to demoralize. That's great, except they were already on their demoralized side. So, oh well. But there, I moved back one. Alright, let's see here. I am going to I'm gonna fight them again. So let's go ahead and discard this card. Do another battle. Same deal. Six plus three, nine. I have a level two for it, so plus two, so eleven. And then they are at three plus four for the train, so it's seven. So I'm plus eleven, they're plus seven. Alright, so I beat them. Five and a six. However, see, so they're pushed back. However, because they rolled a six on their die, the barbarian army is flipped to the bold side. So I'm out of cards anyway, but I wouldn't keep attacking them. All right. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the summer round. Start off with barbarians. Get their three cards. Oh, here we go. Place this one, okay, so Costo Bokai, place this card in the Eastern Empire off map conflict space. Uh, if the space occupied, well, there's not occupied. So, what this is is that, so it goes over here. This is a cool thing about this game is it adds in. It's not just what's happening here. You know, there's the Imperium track, which is, you know, the equivalent of what's going on in Rome, and there's off map. So, this is, you know, conflicts happening in the, part of the western part of the empire and the eastern part. So, right now I have a conflict going on in the eastern part of the empire. And I will lose one IP per year. Um, this happens uh, in the housekeeping housekeeping phase, or excuse me, housekeeping round. So I would lose one IP per year until it's resolved. And it's resolved by placing leaders and armies 
in the box, to basically sending them off to that to fight this battle, to fight this, you know, what's going on here, this conflict, and then beating the die roll there, which is a five. So, or it's like five strength. So it'd be five plus the one d six. So, all right, let's go ahead and that was number one. Yep, yeah, barbarian card one. Barbarian card two, Marco Mani. All right, same thing as before. They're surrendered. We do an Oathbreaker check, but I have six strength over here, the Marco Mani track, um, six pacification value, so that it doesn't count. But it, they still add it to the surge pile. That's the first one. And now the third card, Scandal Faustina. Oh, Faustina, lose one IP. Oh, great, I'm down to two. Yeah, I gotta get on that. Okay. All right, so that's their um, Barbarian phase. So now my phase, it's the Summer Round, so I only have to draw three cards. That's a good one here, actually. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play bar. First of all, play Barbarian Informants. Look at the top five cards of the Barbarian deck. Reorder them if you like. Of course, I'm gonna reorder them. I'm sure. All right, the top five. All right. Okay. Here, so I'm gonna put. I'm definitely gonna put that one first. You'll see. You'll see. I'm sorry. I don't want to explain all of them. And, you know, take ten minutes here. So, um. all right. I'll go ahead. And that's what we'll do for there. All right. Let's go ahead and do. We're gonna play this action card um, to build two forts. We build a fort in the plus seven on the uh, quad eye track, and then the plus eight in our home spot. So now we have a line of forts all the way from the Danube all the way to their home spot. This will help with fighting them. And my last card. Let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and discard this uh, as to take an action. The action is to raise my IP. So I suppose you know my Imperium, raise the Imperium track by one. So I'm go to three here. I suppose I you know go and do something. Uh, do something with Rome and something to increase my power back in Rome. So, all right, that's the end of summer round. Let's go to the winter. So we start with the barbarians here. Oh, what do you know? Quiet on the Danube. Do not draw any more barbarian cards this round. What a coincidence. So that's why I was able to stack it that way and, and do that. So, all right, so now it's my turn here. Um, I only get my phase, I should say. I only get one card in the winter. Harsh winter. Oh, that's a good one to hang on to anyway. Barbarian cards are drawn this round. Yeah, I'm gonna hang on to this one for the next. So normally you have to you discard um, at the end of the winter winter round. You discard all your cards, except you can save one card in the meditation spot, or if you have you Licinian mysteries, you can save two cards in the, the two meditation spots. I don't have the you Licinian mysteries, so I can save one card though. So I'm gonna end end that, and I'm gonna save the one card right here. All right, so moving on to housekeeping round. Let's see, attrition. Remember, roll 1d6 for each one of these, each one of the forts here. I started with Marco Mani with the top, down, work my way down, okay? So Marco Mani top. Oh, okay, well that's, it was at a level one, so it's eliminated. So six, six eliminate, or reduce, I should say. Five, that's good. Start with Quad Eye up at their home, work our way down. Safe. Safe, it's five, good. This one here, six. Now this is a level two fort, so I just uh, reduce it to level one. And then the last one here, it's it's good. So, all right, so we're good right now. Forts out of supply. Nope, they all can trace a path of supply from the Danube. Temporary truce marker, the one that was on the easy guys here, is discarded now. Uh, flip marks Aurelius, demoralized to bold. He's always bold. All right, off map conflicts, one IP. I forgot about that one actually, so yup, it's just one IP. Uh, Markle Manor, Quad South, nope. Um, advanced year, so here we go, year 172. All right, sorry about that. I think uh, I got a low, stop recording for a second. Should be good here. Um, so I'm not sure where it stopped, but I'll just say we're on the, starting the third turn here. 
your 172 at the very beginning, so spring round. Let's see here, what do we want to do here? Okay, let's go ahead. Um, actually, before that, we'll do the redeployment step before we actually get started. So, redeployment lets me remember move my armies, taking my one back from the recovery. Armies and leaders. Um, you know, I still want to be back. I have to leave these guys to pin down the Marco Mani, but also still, I'm going to stop that conflict, but I need to beat back these guys. Oh, man. You know what? I'm going to send Marcus Aurelius with his five, excuse me, six legions over to this eastern off my conflict. i got to rid of that conflict. I'm going to go ahead and just put uh, one legion here at the quad eye. I think I only have six um, with one army. All right. Let's go ahead and begin. Now we'll go ahead and start the barbarian phase of the spring round. I'm going to go ahead and play Harsh Winter first. Um, it, I know it's labeled Harsh Winter, but it says before Barbarian card draw, so I assume it applies to any, anything? Like any round? It says no Barbarian cards are drawn this round. So, maybe I'm cheating, maybe not, I don't know, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it counts. So, no Barbarian cards are drawn. Yay! So it's on to me. Alright, I get my five cards, because it's the spring. Let's go ahead and we're going to discard concessions here. Use the battle action. We're going to battle this off Eastern Empire off map conflict. So it's their 5 plus 1d6 versus my usual. I have 6 legions and then 3 from Marcus Aurelius so 9. So they're at plus 5, I'm at plus 9. 6-6. Six, six. So I win. Um, there's no, no bold or anything like that. But it is a conflict with Marcus Aurelius. Um, now I don't know if it applies to Ahmed Complex. I wonder. Let me let's check the rule book on this. Does that apply to Ahmed Complex? You roll the six. Effects do not apply to off my complex. Okay, that's what I kind of thought. So never mind. No, I don't get my plus one IP, unfortunately. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and so we discard that one. Actually, it's, it's discarded the history pile um, once resolved. Which that see the little symbol there. If you can see it, it gives me plus one victory point here if I win the game, which is very difficult. All right, and then these guys are all placed in the recovery box. So they don't they conflict. You don't get just like come back. They're done. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to discard this card to do an action, which I'm going to build two forts here in the easy guy's territory here. Try to keep them off balance a little bit. And I'm also going to play this card to or discard it, I should say. I'm sorry. I'm going to discard it, take an action. Which I'm going to flip this level two, one four to a level two, because I want to work on building that pacify pacification value on here, so I can remove some of these legions and have them in other conflicts. All right, we're going to hang out of these two cards. We'll go ahead and uh, end our spring round here. So we'll go into the summer round. Let's begin drawing. So easy guys, advance easy guys forward one space or flip from demoralized to bold. Add this card to the surge. So. They're on here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, what you can do is you have a fort there. Instead of activating them and moving them, I'm going to act like the fort gets in the way. I guess they fight the fort instead. It does, it's, it's reduced by one, which is a level one, so it's eliminated. But they stay where they are. Add this card to the surge pile, though. That was number one, Barbarian card. Number two, Balamar. Put Marco Mana to bold. First, perform with bigger type to see if needed. Okay, so this would be a Marco Mana, I think. Um, well, fortunately... Marco Man, I are surrendered, and I still have three, four, five, six, six. Well, actually, now a seven pacification value, so they cannot, they can't break their, they can't break and uh, break away from me and and whatever. I can't win no breaker check. So, I guess it's nothing happened. Let's see.
Yeah, otherwise I'd fight them, but I, I mean, I can't, so I would say just regular, just it's place to awareness was number two. Oh, let's see what happens number three. Morale collapses. All demoralized barbarian armies retreat one space towards their home space. Fortunately, that's none of them. If nor, if they're already in their home space. Fortunately, none of them are demoralized, so nothing happens, and that was the third card. Alright, so now it's the summer phase, so I get three cards. Draw three, I should say. Some good fighting ones. Interesting. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play Rain Miracle. Um, automatically win the battle you're fighting. Do not roll. Gain one IP. Well, I guess it's for battle. Okay, so I'm doing that a little out of order here. Um, you know what? I'm going to switch... Alright, so we're going to discard this one for battle. We're going to battle this one Legion up here, which would normally be Suicide. But I'm going to play Rain Miracle. Automatically win the battle you're fighting. Do not roll. Gain plus one IP. Standing in front only. So again, my IP goes from two to three. That's good. Play for the event. Discard the history pile. Alright, which I did play for the event. So. So you got to push back to here. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard Goddess Fortuna for a battle. I battle this quad eye, or excuse me, this legion up in the, against the quad eye. I'm going to play, sin normally again, suicide here, but I'm going to play single combat. Resolve this battle by rolling 1d6 for each side. Highest number wins. Roman victory, um, well, it'd be surrendered. Um, and then if, if I lose, I lose 2 IP, which would not be good. Now lose a legion. All right, so, but if I win, not only is he uh, surrendered, I get the Marcus Valerius Maximinius for free, which, as I've said in my other video, I believe that's, uh, you know, the gladiator, Russell Crowe. So, I had 1d6, it's a straight roll off here, 1d6 each. Single combat. 1-1. One, one. That's a tie, so reroll ties, as we talked about. Let's see. 5-5. Five, five. Are you serious? Okay, so reroll ties. This is crazy. Alright, let's see. 2-3. So I would lose, except you can discard one card um, when you're losing if you're gonna lose a battle, that's called like bring in reinforcement, something like that. And you can add plus one to your roll. So I'm going to discard this card, that plus one, so now it's 3-3, three, three. it's not to tie, so now it's another roll. Another roll right here. Tie again, are you serious, 2-2? Two, two? This is crazy, okay. One more, hopefully one more. Tie again, this is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. How many ties can you have in one freaking battle? Oh, I lost. Alright, so, um, if you lose a battle, you deduct 2 IP, do not lose a legion. Okay, so... I lose, I just send this guy back down here, and I lose two IP, so I'm down to one IP. That's awesome. Okay, well that's that's all my cards for that uh, summer round here, so let's go to winter. So they draw their three. Let's see what we got here. Unrest in Rome. Discard one card from your hand or in the meditation's holding space. If you don't discard a card, lose two IP. Alright, um, I don't have a card to discard, either meditations or my hand. I lose 2 IP, which puts me at negative 1, which is usurped, which means I'm assassinated. Marcus Aurelius is assassinated, and goes on in history as a loser emperor, not the great emperor he's known as. So game over. Um, so that's a loss in turn 3, year 172, uh, on the winter round. Um, that's, you know, I'll be honest, this, this game's tough, but I think a good solitaire game is tough. You know, it makes you... You have to be a little lucky, but you also have to strategize well. I clearly did not pay enough attention to the Imperium track. I'm not going to blame the camera. I'm just going to say I did not pay enough attention to it. I let it get too low. I didn't deal with it. Um, and that's why I lose. So, you know, you're only supposed to count the victory points when you lose, or excuse me, when you win. But 
it's very hard to win. So I think one way you can kind of value yourself a little bit is say, hey, how many victory points did I get even with a losing effort, right? I guess, I guess value with losing maybe. Yeah, right. So I had one. Because so you look at your history pile, which you only had two cards in the history pile, and only one had the little Roman thing there. So one had, it's one VP. So I lost in the third turn with one VP. So I've said before in my other video, um, I really like this game. Um, I, I'm probably going to write a review, do a written review, put it up on BGG. I don't think I'll do a video review. I don't really do video reviews. But I really enjoy this game. It is States of Siege style, but on steroids. You're managing your cards, you're strategizing, you're not just rolling, you're not just flipping a card and saying, oh, he moves one and I roll against him and that's it. No. I mean, you are strategizing, you're trying to manage your different armies in different places, you're managing the Imperium track, as you can tell, and that's what I lost on, so my back in Rome. You're managing off-map conflicts, uh, card management, hand management. It's just a fun game, great design, recommend it to anyone who enjoys these types of uh, solitaire games, States of Siege style games, um, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's, it's really worth, I think, checking out from Hollandspiel. Um, give it a look. All right, guys. Well, this is Wayne. This has been Wars of Marcus Aurelius. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later.